seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. everybody uh Howdy. welcome to the show what's up <laughs> it's ifb time chris it's thursday again podcast. welcome oh, back we've right. flown around and landed uh, <laughs> beamed well, beam to the uh, beam. well i don't know we well, can't beam no. or, well i guess we can beam I mean, quantum, star trek use the quantum the quantum, quantum flux, shifter yes. flux thing right. capacitor yeah. yep armageddon so we're, yeah we're here we're back yeah here we are we're it's, glad to be back uh, it's it's news, pop culture, sci-fi entertainment channel. Everybody, all our regular IFBers know that. And it's brought to you by the two guys that grew up watching 70s and 80s TV, movies, cartoons. I'm New York Pete. And this is none other I'm than... the Tipsy Toaster. And we welcome you <laughs> to... Uh, I don't even know who I am tonight. Uh, I'm good. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's been a long week. So, I think mean, one of those... One of those definite long weeks I've had. So, but hey, it's great to be back with our fans and people online because it, it this is uh, this is the fun part of the week. I you know I have to work all week with the you know if, if I didn't have to you know live indoors and eat I would probably quit my job. But <laughs> and just do this know, all the time. <laughs> I got it. I got it. You know I got to live indoors and eat. So uh, I got to do that work thing every so once in a while. So this is the fun part of the week and. I'm really glad uh, we get to do it every Thursday at eight o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, and Absolutely. Uh, have a, a great right. time with all the fans because uh, because the fans fuel the fleet. You guys are out there and you fuel everything with, with fandoms. If it wasn't for you, then Hollywood would just be making vo movies and nobody would be watching them. That's right. So, so. hello to Lola. Uh, Her hey, name Lola. Was Lola. Boom boom. Oh, sorry, he and was a show girl. Brigitte in Austria is watching us. She Hi, Brigitte. Hi, Brigitte. Thanks for joining us. So you guys, as you come on, we need to thank Brigitte shout too, out. because oh yeah, she is. Brigitte is she has sponsored us. Yeah, she she bought drinks for us. So uh, thank you very very much, Brigitte. We appreciate that. And um, we'll see as you guys come on. You know, uh, throw up a quick a quick chat, quick word, and we'll definitely squeeze you in like we usually do. And. Uh, all right, so I guess it's that time then, uh, Chris. Hey, wow, John just... Ripper, what's up, buddy? How's it going? John's on. Yeah, cool. Do I need to get the, uh, you know, I need to buy one of those romper what? room things. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I just see Brigitte. I see. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're dating ourselves yeah. again, but. Yeah, well, we, <laughs> we lived some of that stuff. That's right. All right, so look, uh, I am again having the king of beers. It's, it's the key tonight's beers, Budweiser. Uh, Pete's beer tonight is brought to you by his cheap app. <laughs> oh, okay. You know what? Cheap, cheap beer. Listen, Chris. Just because you don't have good taste in American beer. Oh is well, not I think I have good taste in American beer tonight. Tonight I'm celebrating. Uh, well, what? I don't know who it's named this good. one. Oh my God! All right. So you I don't know who named fun. this one, but. Uh, I, I won't mention the individual who drove a white Bronco. Some of us are old enough to know what that is. Uh, oh, but tonight God. I am drinking uh, Big Lick Brewing Company, um, which is out of Roanoke, Virginia, which is uh, where I have a house and everything else. And tonight's beer for me is called Double White Double Bronco. Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't believe you spent money on that. Oh, well. I had to. I was, it sounded interesting. I, what, what do they got listed on here? It sounded interesting. Brewed by a big brewing company, Salem, in, Salem Virginia. Yeah. Um, government warning, should not be drunk by Cylons. Yep, 8% alcohol. <laughs> 8%. So. Holy mackerel. That, hey, that, that makes it good. That makes a good beer. Welcome to the show. Yeah, that makes a good Fran's beer. <laughs> out there. What's up, Fred? Hey, Michael Morlock. What's up, man? Thanks for joining us live, everybody. There's a couple of others I can see here. Uh, there's George's and a whole bunch of other guys. And, up, of course, um, Jeff Walters is there with me. Cylon Lives Matter. 
That's right. Okay. Well, uh, hope to see all of you guys at Knoxville. Yep. I know that. I know uh, Paul's going to be there. Is Paul, yeah, Paul's not Paul on that yet. He, probably come, he comes in a little later. He's on the East Coast yeah. or West Coast. A West Coast. Yeah. He's up on the West Coast. So, you ready? Fit, yep. That's it. So, let's do it. Ready? One, right. two, three. There we go. Boom. Done. Great taste in American beer and Buzz, Budweiser spoken in the same sentence. Absolutely. All right, ready? Hmm, that's pretty good. You're not going to drink out of the can, are you? Look, I'm drinking out of my IFB interface. <laughs> Product placement. <laughs> Go. Ready? Ready? All right, do it. You should put the, your microphone a little higher so everybody can see what you've actually done. Ah. Here comes the king. Here comes the big number one. If I put it higher, then everybody can see. Then everybody sees uh, the imperious leader hugging uh, Cylon Buddha. (laughs) 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 Ah, you freak. Oh, Francis, she broke down and bought the battle jacket from Selkie. Oh, okay. I knew she was looking at it. I knew she was looking. It was a matter of time. (laughs) She tried one on at the the awesome con. She was, she's like, oh, I want one of these. So. Uh, she did it. Hey, Rob, what's up, man? Thanks for joining us live. So, so Chris, here's, yep. uh, here's a toast to everyone. Yep. So here's a toast to everybody. So uh, here at uh, at Interfleet Broadcasting, we celebrate the people that are the fans. We celebrate people. Yeah, cele- celebrate. I haven't even started drinking yet. We celebrate <laughs> people uh, that are behind the scenes, uh, as well as the people who are uh, in front of the camera. But we really like the people that are fans. We really like the people that are behind the scenes because they create the worlds. That we live in, uh, well, I guess like I said before, I guess we live in them. I I still live in Battlestar Galactica. I'm sorry, yeah, and and V and Logan's Run and all the other stuff that we love so much. So, but uh, they, those people that write the worlds, those people who act in the worlds, just create create the things. We salute you, uh, and we always say uh, here, uh, Pete. What do we say? Fans fuel the fleet, guys. Fans fuel so the much. fleet. Here's to you. Excellent. Oh. Lola says she bought a warrior jacket too. We must see pictures of these things. Now yep, gonna gotta, post you pictures. gotta take photos of yourself in the in warrior dra- yeah, jackets yeah. and put we them on. Send them, send them, send them. So I'm sad that nobody's up. buying Cylon costumes. They're only twenty five hundred dollars each. <laughs> Come on, that's it. Just, just. Yay! Yes, Lola. Awesome. <laughs> Francis. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, a, I drink to support the Clydesdales. Absolutely, that's it. So. Uh, Overgrown horses. Said, don't just don't with Apollo shirt. Whoa, Lola's going all out. Yeah. Don't get too crazy, Chris. But we have John One in the wings. He's well, I mean, we up. should. You know, we've got a great show lined up for you tonight. We have John One, uh, who will be yes. giving us some news, and and then after that, we have one of the Ooh. premier. I, I I mean, this person has done so much and is doing so much. Uh, oh yeah. Marnine has. Um, uh, a stunt, a stunt woman. She's been all these other things. So we'll talk more about her later. But we have her on, so uh, we'll have her on for answering questions and, and talking about her yep. life and things that uh, you know changed her life and things that, that she's done since uh, since she started. Uh, just the if if you read the bio of her, it's amazing because she's like, you oh, know, yeah. she starts off in a high school in like North Dakota and then ends up a a, a, a Hollywood. Hollywood actress yeah. a hollywood stunt woman a stunt it's yeah. just amazing it's really cool and she's been in a lot of the shows that we really really love. watched i mean yeah oh, I mean, oh, we name off a bunch so, of them so I mean, you know, we look forward to Wonder that but, woman, but, but first we have john one yeah. island yeah 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 <laughs> oh no so we could just jump right into this you just so, jump right in. heck with john one we'll jump right now no yeah yeah so you know what so that's so marnine is is standing by let's get john on John's got. Uh, oh, hang on for a second. I, I got to set. And... I forgot to set something up. So, okay, hang on, so John. Meantime, hang on, John. Yeah. Okay. So John's with us. Uh, although he had had some uh, technical issues uh, last time, uh, John is back from touring. He was out scouring the West Coast and went to Alaska <laughs> for a bit, and now he's back, and um, he's got a nice uh, selection of uh news and pop culture stuff he's going to tell us about and uh always nice to hear john i like 
his uh, spin on things. And John and I are probably going to coordinate, uh, hit up some of the local uh, conventions here in New York. Uh, there's quite a few going on. Eric, Eric, man, Eric Engler's on. Holy so crap. We were just talking about you the other day, Eric. Obama at GalaxyCon tomorrow. Eric, man, you take care of yourself. Oh, thanks for uh, dropping by and uh, keep in touch, will you, buddy? Oh, Eric is one talented guy. He's always out there. Big Galactica fan and supporter of IFB. Uh, thanks for uh, well, catch us on uh, syndication on the rerun, Eric. We got a really good guest tonight, and uh, John One's giving us a, a, a wrap up on some of the art and, um, yeah. and uh, he's pop got, culture. You know. He's got a great Adama costume too. The blue, beautiful. Yeah, oh yeah, he does absolutely. He does a whole bunch of stuff. So okay, we're ready we're now. Good. I think. John's, yeah, bring on John. John. Welcome back, hey guys. To IFB. Thanks Thank for you guys. Uh, glad to be back. I missed you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so what's up, man? Not much. Got some news. Uh, some TV shows. I'm um, coming on the shows. Uh, some mo- upcoming movies and some dissertations here and there. Uh, I did have. Um, I did visit the comic book store in uh, Pike Place, but I don't have the don't have the pictures yet. So I have to get them. My uh, my. Uh, what you got to on. develop them? <laughs> no, I <laughs> sending them out. Welcome to the digital world, dude. Come on. Photo mat, bro. Chop them off the photo mat. I have, I have them on the other, other cell phone, my wife's cell phone, because my because my phone died. Oh, <laughs> oh I see. Man. But it was it was pretty cool. It's some nice cool. pictures there. I'll get them to you next time. Yeah. All right. Well, first up, uh, lightly as uh, crash in the uh, theaters means it's he's going to be coming on TV pretty soon. So uh, look out for lightly headed to Disney Plus. See it August third. And cool. Well, the wait's almost over. Pray. Will be coming on Hulu, August fifth. Nice. Uh, it's a Comanche that takes on a Predator three hundred years before the uh, original Predator comes out with Schwarzenegger. So we we'll see how. Uh, I, I'm still gonna. I still want to watch it. In the sense that they said that this one's going to be like I said before. Um, they're actually going to have it uh, dubbed in Comanche. I've got to oh. watch it. In that I just got to watch it that way just for fun. I just got to see oh, how, yeah. what it sounds like. Oh, boy. I'm gonna try that. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Oh, that's yeah, be cool. <laughs> I mean, some of some of the shots and the previews for it looks looks uh, really good. So, looking forward to it. That'll be on Hulu cool. August fifth, and also on Netflix uh, on the fifth. Uh, Sandman finally comes into our realm. Oh boy, uh, there's some good actors in it: Gwendolyn Christie, Live on the uh, Devil, Sloth, uh, Greed. Uh, there's a scene out now with Christie and uh, the Sandman talking. And it's really good. So if, if anything cool. like the scene, then the series is going to be really good. That's going Excellent. to be on August 5th on Netflix. That's what I'm looking forward to that. And it does look promising. Disney's I Am Groot will be premiere August 10th. It's an animated series about Groot. I don't know what's going to happen. He's probably going to fall into things or whatever. But I'll, for the I'll bet you I know exactly the dialogue. Groot, I Groot, am Groot, 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 Groot. <laughs> 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 so... And She-Hulk, Attorney of Law, will be on Disney Plus August 17th. Look to see some cameos. Uh, maybe we might see a Matt, Matt Murdock playing her, uh, her lawyer buddy, but that's a rumor, but we will see. So it looks looking pretty good. And Matt Murdock will be coming back to Disney next year, uh, Daredevil Reborn, with all the original characters. So stick more for that to come next year. So, and now the first of many Game of Thrones spinoffs will premiere on HBO yeah. this August 21st, House of the Dragon. Oh boy! The Targaryens come to rule. I'll watch it. It looks seems like a good cast. Uh, the guy from uh, The Crown is in it, who played Prince Philip. But you know, it has some pretty big shoes to fill, and we will see. So, right. yo, I'm probably guys. one of the few people in the world that have not watched Game of Thrones. Oh, 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 oh boy! Ooh. You need to binge that. Yeah. Also, <laughs> haven't watched uh, the. The Towers and The Ring and all. I haven't watched any of those either. That's Lord awesome. of the Rings, none of that. <laughs> I wasn't on. freezing. I was just shocked. <laughs> yep. What's up with that? Hey, Mediocre Modelers oh. with me. Who else has watched? He hasn't watched it either. Oh. Yo, come on, That's, you guys. You gotta, come on, you gotta jump on the train. <laughs> no. Jump on no. the fancy train. No. Lord of the Rings is coming on this uh, September on Amazon, too. So. Yeah. It looks pretty Fran? Good. You too, Fran? Okay. Oh. All right. Ah, I've got good company. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We won't hold Speaking it of dialogue, <laughs> yo, bad guys, Sylvester Stallone <laughs> will play a superhero 
oh, in no. a Samaritan. This will be his first role as a superhero, and it'll be coming on Amazon August twenty sixth. Can but, you imagine? Yeah, but you have know, you seen watch... the have you seen the uh, the trailer? It's not yeah, that bad. Yeah. He's oh, like, oh, I'm a broken down guy. I'm hiding away. How many times have you seen that? And now he, he redeems yeah, no, himself and stays in the neighborhood. So yeah. I guess he needed the money to pay for his uh, new uh, Expendables movie coming out. He's going to have that out next year. Ugh. He's working on number four now. Expendables 20. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep, it, keep it going. But I, I'll watch it. Why not? <laughs> I, need, I need a couple of laughs. Andor's premiere will drop on Disney August 31st. Andor. Previews look pretty good, but, you know. Yep. I like the Empire, so I'll be rooting against him. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> of course. Go uh, Cylon Empire. <laughs> it does oh, look promising. Calm down. Did I did I cross the streams again? Yeah, yeah, you cross streams again. <laughs> <laughs> and for your comic book fans, Netflix is developing a live action series based on another comic book. The Goon. Oh. The Goons oh. and his sidekick work for a mobster, I think Bronzetto, while they fight off uh, rival zombies. It's the comic is well, the comic was pretty good. It's still good. So hopefully this is going to be a good series. Looking forward to it. We'll keep you updated on it. And new episodes of Resident Ailing will start August 10th. Uh, that's yeah, the second, uh, that's one of my favorite shows. We'll get to see the baby run around and see what else he can cause. Yep. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. And coming to a theater near you, Bullet Train, an action thriller. Featuring Brad Pitt yep. with an ensemble cast, a bunch of assassins with both different uh, agendas on the plane, on the train. So what could possibly go wrong? Wait a minute, wasn't there the barrels through Japan? Wasn't there a yeah. movie called Bullet Train already? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. No, I, I think it was uh, was it Bullet Train or Money Money Train? Money Train. That's it. Never Money mind. Train. Yeah. Yeah. So I know oh, I've seen the trailers for it. I'll, I'll watch. I'll watch. So, yeah, I probably go see it. Yeah. That's going to out on August fifth. Egypt Elba. Stars in the Beast. Oh. Another remake of a lion going crazy trying to save his family. I saw the previews for this. It looks interesting. Yeah. yeah. Too much. You know, hey, DC, if you're hearing, cast Idris Elba as John Stewart. We all know he's better than. Uh, oh, yeah. Ooh. The other guy. He's got a much better storyline. He needs to be in ne oh, yeah. the next Green Lantern. <laughs> you know, he's better than, way better than Hal Jordan. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and the upcoming film, uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. We'll hit theaters November 11th. This is one of the, I think it's MCU 5 or the ending of uh, season 4, but it looks pretty good. And the big baddie for him is Namor. Namor uh -oh. is going to fight Black Panther. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't get anyone else that's better? A, that's another <laughs> one I don't know anything about. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> what know? the heck? All right. You know what? Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's, that's all I have to report. And what you guys think on that? And if... Uh, you guys have any ideas, any trailers or anything, email me at lonecenturian1 at gmail at gmail.com, and I hope to guys see you soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks, John. Appreciate it, man. Yep, hey, care, Brian John. Belloff, thanks for joining us live. Paul Roder, Commander Kane is with us. Thank you, Paul, for coming on. Jeff Walters, Cylons Forever. Yes, of course. And, um, yeah, Mediocre Modeler, uh, waiting for more videos from you. But, uh, hey, guys, thanks for joining. Um, so we promised – that we were going to get you top-notch uh, interviews with all of, you know, the people. Whoever was going to come on our show. <laughs> well, hey, well, no, no, listen, we, you know, we've we've actually been lucky. We've, we've had been quite lucky. a few good people, and Very this is lucky. definitely um, a, a great person. A, so Academy Award uh, nominees, winners, Emmy winners, um, writers behind the scene. We've had a couple of, you know, those that – have been in front of the camera, but we've also mixed it up as well. And tonight, uh, and this person's someone... been in front of the camera, and oh yeah, behind the camera, and yeah. written stuff for the camera, and <laughs> directed things for the camera, and talk about world building. Amazing. One of the pioneers. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Marnie Fields, who has been doing all kinds, has one heck of uh, a bio. Um, I mean, if you're interested, guys, which you should be, uh, I just happened to stumble on Wikipedia. I saw her professional reel, and you know, we've been you know looking at some of the other things that she's been doing, and it is off the hook. And um, we got to talk to her a little bit before doing some prep right before we went on, and you know, we mentioned some of our you know 
we grew up in the 70s and 80s, so we love watching all that great stuff that she was in. Uh, Wonder Woman, Fantasy Island, Man from Atlantis, The Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew Mysteries, Logan's Run, um, Battlestar Galactica. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And that's just that's just stuff, you know, that we always kind of bring up and the things that we, you know, we kind of like and love. But um, she's done so much more and gone so beyond that. Music as well, current projects, books, you name it. And we have her with us right now uh, in the wings. Uh, so without further ado, it's time to have Marnie Fields come on and welcome her to Interfleet Broadcasting. Uh, Marnie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled. You guys are amazing. It's a beautiful uh, format. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for taking the time out. I, I know that you were earlier today, you were flying um, flying about. I think you were out like in L.A. and then just came for in driving. a while ago. Yeah. Driving. Oh, back. my God. Oof. Well, thank you. So, thank you so much for taking the time out. Um Marnie, you how, how did you how do you go how do you see somebody back in the day cuz obviously it is how do you get into Hollywood how do you break in Well um first I want to say Budweiser is my dad's favorite beer <laughs> 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 ah, great, minds, great minds great minds you're going to be having a beer um I don't drink beer much but uh, so anyway in 1973 and I was um, in Simi Valley, California at that time. I uh, was one of three women in the United States that received an athletic scholarship in gymnastics. They didn't give athletic scholarships in gymnastics back then to women, only three of us. And so I uh, competed at Utah State University and I was able, if you can believe this, I was uh, Oval Corbett stuff on the floor exercise and the balance beam, which is, you know, that back layout and the, the toe point flip flops. And so um, I had an injury on an ankle three years into college as the top gymnast in the school and third uh, in the nation on floor exercise and balance beam. So I, I had to move back home where my family was in uh, Simi Valley. And um, my brother met, um, my older brother, Bobby, had a tryout with the Rams. And he met a stuntman named Paul Stater who had a stunt school. And my brother said, I can't do it because he's a whole foot taller than me. And he, they were all diving off these ladders and things. And so um, I went down and Paul Stater he recognized a champion gymnast in me and he took me under his wing and um, I got like my first 25 jobs with him. And the, the first job that I got was to do the backward fall off the rope after she spins around on um, the spell with Helen Hunt and um, Lee Grant. But we talk about A Man from Atlantis. That was my first TV series. Ooh. And I would really... It, can I talk about Man from Atlanta? Sure. Oh, you can talk about whatever you want. We He's want to hear so, it all. We'll be here for hours if you want us to be. <laughs> and and I, was, um, I was studying acting in college, so I was minoring in theater arts, and I always had an interest in acting. And the spell I actually landed um, the acting role and that fall from the ba backward fall off the top of a rope after climbing it without my legs and spinning around the rope. Um, so then uh, Paul, Paul got me that and that interview. And um, Paul calls one day and he says, um, I want to take you over to this bridge, Santa Monica Bridge. And he says, do you know anyone who could dive off this bridge with me? And it was a double person high dive off the Santa Monica Bridge into six feet of shallow ocean water. And I, I actually had to wear a weight belt because they're aliens who swim very fast underwater, so we couldn't pop back up. So first I'm told, okay, the second your, bat, your head hits the water, you arch, but you can't come up out of the water. You gotta swim forward. And so I did this amazing double person high fall, high dive into the shallow water with him. 
and uh, you know, you please show, you know, this this is on here it goes. And he was that's me on the bottom. He could have knocked me out. He could have clobbered me. I mean, you see how close he was and he was 66 or something and he did that dive with me. And then I was the first woman um, photographed doing the famous man from Atlantis swim. And you see me in that same shot. If you show the next section of that, you'll see me doing the man from Atlantis swim and Patrick Duffy hot on my heels coming after me. And uh, there I am, my version. I'm, I'm not as good as Patrick Duffy. There is Patrick Duffy. And we do, then we do this underwater fight and that's on one breath. You know, we don't even notice there's no tanks. And so then, um, also on Man from Atlantis, the next thing I get called to do is to dive out of a helicopter into Desi Arnaz, um, um, the club in Palm Springs. And they put me, what's, what's so interesting is that I almost took that helicopter into the water with me because I needed to match um, Belinda Montgomery's shoes. And I, I only had on black socks and her shoes were black. So they put me um, in black socks and I went out of that helicopter and slipped because socks are slippery. You can show that, but yeah. And uh, that's, it. yeah, here it comes. Okay, so first I push him in and then I dive and that's my slip from the socks. And I go in underwater and I save him and take him out of this and everything. But I'll tell you something, there was nothing like slipping on that helicopter from the inside and uh, in the socks. So then my career took off. So the next thing I ended up getting was uh, Clint Eastwood, um, through Paul Stater again, Buddy Van Horn, Clint, Clint Eastwood's uh, stunt double. I had to pick up the phone one day. My phone was like the magic phone for 15 years. I pick up the phone and <laughs> um, so he says, um, Paul Stater put your name in to do this jump off the train. Would you, would you, do you think you can do it? It's a moving train and it's with Clint Eastwood. And so um, I said, yes, without even thinking about it, but the, I went out backwards out of the train with a half twist. And I've been on stage um, introducing the gauntlet, like in Australia and some other places. And the thing is, is when, when you go off a train, you've got to go the direction that the train's going or you'll get sucked back under the wheels. So in 1977, these were some of the biggest stunts any stunt girl did in 1977, all four of those, just those alone. But the Clint Eastwood, and here I am slugging him in the stomach and kicking him. And um, that was like, yeah, we definitely got to see this because I'm backwards, I'm to the back, if you notice, I go out half twist. And then, and when your body leaves an object, Going that speed, you, you you fly with the object, and then when the gravitational force passes, you drop like a sack of potatoes, and that's when the, the roll uh, took place. But that was a, a very, that was so, I had to muscle my way to keep going the direction of the train because I went out backwards with that twist, and it, it was, it was, um, but yeah, um, I've seen Clint Eastwood a few times since then. And um, in a while, we'll get to the point where this is my Clint Eastwood moment today, 45 years into my career. I'm producing and directing my first feature film after all of this. And uh, so I, I would like him to be proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> and you had an interesting Clint Eastwood story where uh, after that, that uh, was shot, um, he came in and 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 talked to you in regards to the the the, the actual right. stunt. Yeah, what was so amazing is that I do the stunt and I'm I pulled it off and I'm laying on on the dirt and everyone's gone and oh oh there's another really important point in this. Props brought in an old rusty coke can and they threw in tumbleweeds and they threw in the Coke can. And if you go back, you can see that I almost landed, my foot almost, if I would have landed on that Coke can, I would have been cut to smithereens. And I, yeah, you'll see the, how far I traveled 
by see, find, seeing this Coke can in the sand. Right there, there. See how yeah. I landed on it and how far I traveled? Well, um, God was with me, angel on my shoulder. But anyway, so everybody's gone. And I'm like, now what do I do? And I'm, I'm, up, I'm, sit, I'm set up. And what happens is this big old train starts coming backward. And Clint Eastwood jumped out of the train and ran over to me and said that he loved it. And he, um, he gave me a hug. I've been hugged, directed by and hugged. By, <laughs> uh, I know. Clint Eastwood, Irwin Allen. I, I'd like to get uh, hugged by Clint Eastwood. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Irwin and, Allen. I mean, it was those Ooh. hugs that got me through the dark days when I, after my car accident. The, the, the recognition, these men are so gracious. Not only are they the most famous men in the world in entertainment, but they are so appreciative and they are so thoughtful. And um, It sounds like you they, had a really good, uh, a, a good group of people that you worked with. You know, sometimes you hear the horror stories, but... Oh, yeah. Well, I don't have any horror stories to tell. That's great. Because, um, you know, but I was a champion gymnast. And I was at back in those years, there weren't champion gymnasts, you know, like only three in college. And so I had the talent. I don't have it now. I can brag about it because I lost it all in the car accident. But um, so it was pretty incredible. Man from Atlanta, Paul Stater thought I could do anything. And if I had the belief in me, he had, and I never will have that belief, but he just, he would just, he would just you can do it you can do it you know and just just amazing it was wonderful it was exciting imagine that it was like my phone was a red telephone even though it was a landline black <laughs> that telephone <laughs> now there's a, there's a yeah go ahead i'm sorry no no that's just great and and uh actually uh john that we just had on he had a quick question He's, he wanted to he wanted you to mention or, or maybe comment on um, being a stunt woman how hard was it being one of probably very few stunt women did you get a lot of well pushback in the industry how different is it now well I think that now it's it's all safety you know and all the uh, computer uh, generated stuff see oh, yeah. I, everything I did was um, I only went into an airbag once in 15 years. The rest oh my of gosh. Was my back into boxes, into sand. Um, or, you know, one thing I learned when I started doing stunts, the gymnastics mats were gone. There was no more. And I never got the springboards and the spring floors in gymnastics. That was just coming in as I was ending my gymnastics career. So it was when Wonder Woman beats me up, on her um, episode and throws me all over the apartment um, onto my back. That I'm falling on the hardwood floor, and when I flip over the couch, that's my tum power tumbler legs. <laughs> and um, yeah, you could you could show that. And this is great. I have the reel to be able to back these up. Yeah, that was the flip. But that that's me. That's the ground that I'm on, and you know, falling and you know, that's that's. Uh, Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool. shocked that there was... So I, even coming out of the train, you didn't have a mat that you fell on. You actually just fell on the ground there. Right. I fell on the out ground. Out of the gauntlet? On, on all of them. It, and, and that's what we did, you know. What I had for protection on the gauntlet was a little boy's football girdle and um, little knee pads, a... Uh, and little elbow pads. Oh my gosh. Now, now in Scotland, I didn't have any elbow pads and I, I didn't came away without a scratch. Um, but in the other things, <laughs> wow. you wear little falsies, little falsies, you know how thin those are. Yeah, that's not going to do much. And, um, <laughs> and all of us is pioneering stunt women. But luckily, because of the gymnastics, um, now here you're showing uh, Hellhole. 
I was very serious about acting. So this was, I got in with Paul Stater in 76, college was 73 to 76. By 77, I'm one of the top stunt women in the world and doing Clint Eastwood movies and all these TV series. And it's just like amazing. And But I trained, I did like five um, and 10 mile workouts a day. And I trained, continued to train like a champion. And then in 1979, my career changed again, uh, meeting uh, Victor French from Highway to Heaven and Little House on the Prairie, and, and just a brilliant actor, director. And I worked with him for three years. And then I went on and worked with Jeff Corey, who did um, Dustin Hoffman, Paul Newman, um, Jane, um, Jack Nicholson. And um, so I had six years of extensive theater training. And it took me eight years of that till I landed Hellhole in 1985. And I became then one of the first women that came from stunts to land a huge co-star role like this. And everyone thought she's the next Sissy Spacek. And then unfortunately I had this horrible car accident that's derailed my career. Um, and I was never able to do stunts again um, as of 91. But I've continued to act, and now I'm <laughs> I'm on the upswing, um, starring and directing my first feature film. That's I, incredible. I, you that keep bouncing back. Awesome. I mean, some people would have quit. I well, think. and I, you know, yeah, and it never crossed my mind for so many years because see, so much picked me up. Had I not had that early success, I would have quit. But quitting was not an option. Reinventing myself to prove, because what I wanted to do as a child is I wanted to be a famous singer more than anything on this earth. And so during the accident, I said, well, now I'll, 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 I'll become a singer. And I went back to school and became a composer and a singer. And while I was having abdominal operations and fighting for my life for 12 years, I also crawled to the microphone every day. And uh, it healed me. It helped. It helped because I, um, you know, so it's all complicated. My career is really complicated because I had to keep reinventing. I don't know. Can you play a little of the song? Yeah. Hang on. I got to pull the audio. There it is. YouTube will probably kick us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. You have a fantastic voice, by the way. Oh, absolutely. I better not do much more because I don't know if we got oh, copyright on that really or not. <laughs> so that's my that's my most recent music video, and I won a Best Actress Award. Um, for my performance in that and also have gotten um, a best uh, single and best alternative rock song and then from different competitions and then nominations for best uh, music video. So that was filmed here in Las Vegas and I'm, I'm going back to Los Angeles but since COVID I've been in Las Vegas and that was filmed at Lake Jacqueline um, at Desert Shores. And I love doing music videos. I love, um, you know, being like a, a rock opera um, artist. I love that. But I've also worked really, really hard as a script writer since the 80s. And I have an award-winning screenplay, Who's Going to Take Care of Me, that has won or been nominated for nine Best Screenplay Awards. Um, and... That's the film I'm producing. And what happened is I got cast as a, a warden in a prison in a film a couple months ago. And I've been trying to sell this screenplay about my mom's mental illness, homelessness, breast cancer, lymphoma, and family betrayal, and then salvation. I've been trying to sell it, and everyone loves it, and it's won all these awards. Well, once I did this role as this warden, I saw the director was able to produce his stuff. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to wait anymore. I'm not going to pitch it to anyone else, even no matter how much they love it. I'm going to do, produce, and nine, uh, 500 people um, 
came immediately in the first three days to audition and 90 people have been cast. It's a big feature film. And um, we start filming September 25th. And uh, it's my directorial debut and I'm so excited. So anyway. That's that's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's it, you know, sometimes you have to fund it yourself. And there's been a lot of successful, uh, uh, Pete will back me up on this because he knows all of the ones that, um, there's been a lot of successful fan or not fan. Um, what word am I looking for, Pete? The um, funded. Oh, you, uh, fan fan funded fan and, funded and, films. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of good, great stuff. I'm going to do a fundraiser uh, this week. The fundraiser will launch, and you know, with the nine, 90 people in the cast, and um, I've got a lot of champions uh, that are. Janine Avanti, who is a champion water skier, bodybuilder. She plays me from the years of 30, 34 to 44. I'm playing my mom, which is so incredible oh, wow. that I'm playing. Yeah. Um, suffered with the schizophrenia and these the brain cancers and uh, all this stuff. And um, we have cast uh, Donna Heising, who's uh, 92 on the IMDb. You might, you guys might know her. Her granddaughter is playing me at three years old, and oh, wow. we have Ren Barnes, a uh, wonderful starlet. She's playing my mom at twenty-two years old. So the film spans from nineteen thirty-eight to two thousand when I brought my mom home to safety after missing for nine years. But it takes an encounter to horrible childhood that caused the schizophrenia and stuff, and it's a fabulous fabulous story it's true drama it's horrific it's um spiritual because of um schizophrenia and hallucinations and delusions and it's i've had, it's had five rewrites and all kinds of coverage and so i i'm i'm so thrilled that um i it's, i i didn't expect this i didn't expect you know i've been trying to sell it i i thought a big star would you know grab it and now i won't give it to anyone now we're going forward <laughs> yeah if you can't you know if you can't have somebody else do it then do it yourself i mean I'm, do it yourself we're Absolutely. very we're very familiar with that uh oh yeah oh and, yeah uh, um, as a matter of fact uh go ahead. we have uh baz from uh australia from down under who's with us uh he's uh a uh celebrity in his own right he he's a prop maker and he's been interviewed and he's got his own uh uh facebook and group and and the like so hey baz thanks for uh, tuning in we have morning fields and hope you're catching some of her story uh this is incredible morning september you're going to start shooting how long do you think it's going to take to actually uh from from beginning to end when do you think uh you're projecting a release well, what I've done is the way I've set it up is that because I'm right now, everything's out of pocket until I do the fundraiser. And so I've set it up for one day um, starting in September. That'll be one day. Then I have two or three days in October, then one day in November and one day in December. And because the film spans nine years and then also the early childhood and the flashbacks and the things that happen, mm -hmm. I can I have leeway with continuity because it's filled with cameo roles um it's you know like what i loved growing up was like pinocchio how he would come in touch with the bad guys and you know the in the different scenes so it shows my mom what she dealt with during those nine years and then it shows me searching for her trying to bring her home and she won't come home and the different things of finding out she's got schizophrenia and all of this so i'm thinking six to eight months of filming because i want to do it i'm not going to rush this i want it to be beautiful and special and um the way that i'm going to shoot it and everything then it'll take another four months for post-production i do a lot of my own editing in fact that video you saw i've edited it i've edited all my own videos um music videos and some shorts and different things and so i will be doing some post-production you know with with 
my editing and then also bringing someone in and I have David uh, Longoria who's a famous uh, trumpeter and I'm going to use his, I love his music, his instrumental stuff, then I've also written a few songs that'll be in the film. Oh, cool. So, That's yeah. awesome. Wow. So you have and, you have your plate full. <laughs> and you know, I, I so much hit my true calling with this and when you look at 45 years and all the study in school and colleges and t training and crafts and um, everything to get to this point that, that and, and it's brought me and it's, it, it, I'm just I'm just just it's my moment <laughs> it my sure moment is one moment in time to give me all that I thought I could be when all of my dreams are a heartbeat away and the answers are all up to me that Absolutely. sounds like a song lyric. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Maureen, tell us, uh, tell us about. Um, I mean, you may not have a favorite, but if you, if you do, what is your favorite TV show that you worked on? Oh, that I've worked on. Um, a favorite TV show that I've worked on. Um, well, you know. I, I guess I would have to say you know, the man from Atlantis was, was amazing, but I, I kind of have to go with um, what was the most amazing to work on rather than, you know, which one I like the best. Oh, and okay. um, I, have to, I have to go to the Quincy um, episode that I did. And okay. that's not on the show, I don't think, because no. I don't have a good of it but I jumped off the first interstate bank building that was 75 stories high Holy and cow. I know I mean, I'm gonna tell you the story they called me and they said you know could I do it so I got there and they picked me up and I got to ride in the front of a limousine for the first time ever in a limousine and I got to ride in the front because the stars were in the back and so they took me to the very, very, they pulled me up and they said, you're going to jump off that building. And it was 75 stories. It's no longer there. And they took me through the elevator and up to the top on the roof. And they dressed me in a, a sheer negligee with a um, sheer top. And they put me in those little fluffy slippers with the high heel. And they said, okay, you're going to run out and you're going to get up on that railing. And now it's dark, okay? It's also, let's add dark to that. It's night, pitch black. And I run out, I, I run across the railing, no cable, no cable. I'm 75 stories up and I have to jump feet first. Now I went into, there's like a crevice, of, there was like a cove that they couldn't, it was so tiny, they can't even get the cameras down in there, but they, went down they were peeled down and they put boxes and they tied the boxes with rope and so i now have to jump um over this ledge and hit these boxes and the boxes are supposed to collapse and so i hit the boxes and i was so tiny back then a size 6 115 pounds the boxes didn't collapse and so um i thought i was going to dive off the building now cause, and I got no cable on. I've got no protection. I'm in a negligee with little slippers. And oh my gosh. Um, I know. Oh my gosh. So I remembered in gymnastics on the trampoline to throw my bottom for a seat. Uh, and so I bounced and I'm I throw my bottom into the seat and I did everything I could to pull back so that I, I landed on my my bottom and, and the back of me. Well, then anyway, they, we got it. They came down, they sent the wire down. I had to hook it, the little thing, put it around and then bring me back up, the repel me back up to the top of the building. And so, you know, it was that kind of thing that, um, but you don't think about it till now, that would never play, take place today. And everything I did was without a cable. There was never, I never had a cable on me. I never got the jerk off. It was always, you know, 
And I'm not the only one. This is all of them, the Eppers, um, Debbie Evans, uh, Jean Coulter, all of us. We came from pioneer days. We didn't have the protection that they have, and that's good. I'm glad, um, you know, but that, it was fun, and it was... Um, so there was that kind of stuff. And then there's one more, and I should tell it since you said it. Um, and, and, and you want the stunt stuff. So it is so fascinating. And I do have a book coming out uh, the end of this year. And it's Rolling with the Punches with the Hollywood Fall Girl. And it's going to tell, uh, tells all these stories and has photos and different things. And that's how we met is that you got found autographed posters online. Yes. And researched me and I thank you so much because it, it's so exciting to share because people meet me today as you know a singer and um, actress and now the film and they don't realize what I did 15 years <laughs> but I do have to share one other stunt that was a riptide that you guys will just crack up um, I had to run out doubling a lady named Robin Riker, and I've got a manuscript in my hands, and I'm in a pair of spike heels, and I have to run down the cobblestone part, uh, thing at the beach first, and the, the heels are you know, in the cobblestone, and I've got the manuscript in one hand, and I come to a bob wire fence, and I have to scale that bob wire fence in the high heels, get to the top, throw the manuscript. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now the heels, it was like a spider in a web. So here I am, I can do anything and I can do it in one take. But in this one, it took three takes because this doggone heels kept falling off my feet and hooking me in the fence. Oh, no. But you can see it's a one arm thing over the bomb wire fence. So oh finally, my God. I, I know, you can't believe it. Um, so I shoved my toes as hard as I could into those dug on heels to discipline it, to stay on my feet. And, um, but yeah, and then, then I wanna tell you the drop from there is huge. They didn't shoot from the other angle. The drop from there is huge. And I'm, I'm, so I spin over, I flip over, and then I'm dropping like as if you've jumped off a mountain itself on the other side of that. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. That's And my friend was incredible. there that day. One of my friends was there that day, and she said, you know, I don't know anyone who could have done that but you. And that was like, it was those comments that kept me going. So the quitting wasn't an option because I had conquered, I had, you know, Marnie Fields, uh, and there's been real failure, you know, <laughs> and, and um, I, but quitting isn't an option. And now doing my greatest work and everyone will see, and um, I wanted this, I wanted to do Purple Rain when I saw Purple Rain, and this is my Purple Rain. I wanted to um, be Woody Allen, be clever in my screenplays. And, you know, I wanted to write it, something like Neil Simon when I was doing Neil Simon. So, and my mom, my mom did this for me. Nobody did this, but my mom, my mom, my mom did this. So cool. Marnine, we, um, a lot of the fans that are uh, chatting it up uh, just want to say hello to John. John McCartney, thanks for joining us and everybody else that are watching us live. Uh, there's one question that's come up a couple of times. Were there ever any stunts that you refused to do for any reason? Well, you, that is such a great question. And yes, there were there were two. And, and the only time I turned anything down is... One guy called and he said he wanted me to jump like 20 or 25 feet into a bunch of trees. And, and I was going to, and I just, I did not have a good feeling about jumping that high feet first into a bunch of trees. I just saw myself getting cut up and... 
there were years where after the car accident, I had PTSD and I would have flashbacks. And one of the flashbacks that I would have was I would be very high up on a ledge and they would be telling me to jump, jump. And when I would jump in my mind, I would jump into glass. Oh my gosh. Sheets of glass would cut my feet, my legs, cut my legs off. And um, I lost a large portion of one of my thighs to melanoma after the car accident. But I would have those kind of flashbacks where I'd be driving. I was thinking I was fine, driving down the road. And all of a sudden, I look left, and now it isn't a truck hitting me. It's a bus, and it's oh, coming boy. through. But they worked with, um, there's a, I, I think it was called, um, I forget the name, Gabapentian or something. Gabapentian. And it took the flashbacks away. And I no longer am suffering from PTSD, but there were years there with the surgeries where I would have these horrific environmental disaster visions, flashbacks, and bad dreams about environmental things. Then another guy who I had worked with for quite a bit, he wanted me to do a scene where I was running full speed in the, in the dark um, and the pack of dogs were chasing me and chased me up the tree and i happen to be kind of scared of dogs are biting me and and so those are those are the only two stunts i ever turned down i never turned anything else down wow that's incredible so um and Marnie, first i've ever mentioned the ptsd i've never talked about it oh well well thank you for sharing that uh yeah. and if you don't mind do you have any um any recollections of your time with uh, Battlestar Galactica? Yes. Okay. Battlestar Galactica. Um, I met a man named Bill Ketching who took a real interest in my career um, during the time I was working with Paul Stater. And it's like it was handed up. It was like a baton. You know, uh, one person would help me tremendously and then the baton would pass to the next one. And Bill Ketchin opened a lot of doors for me and really believed in me. And he was married to one of the most beautiful women I had ever seen in my life. And they had divorced and married a couple of times, but her name was Dottie Ketchin. And she became unavailable. And I was nowhere, anywhere near. I mean, she was tall and slender. And um, they, she, I got called, and I was small and slender back then. But um, to Double Jane Seymour, who I'm an excellent double for. And I was so thrilled after seeing her on uh, James Bond and being a Bond girl that I got to double uh, Jane Seymour because uh, Dottie was not available. And Jane was probably one of the most uh, wonderful women that I've met. So I did several episodes of Battlestar Galactica uh, doubling Jane Seymour, and I wore her long wig, and um, anywhere I went in that wig, I would just get, you know, wolf whistles, and oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> and, I mean, if you want to, you got to have that hair that Jane Seymour had, and I just love her, and my god, what an actress, she's gone on to do just amazing, but the best thing I did on, on and I oh and I got cast as a fighter pilot in a couple episodes where I drove Woo! and um, did the explosions it's in one of your posters you see me um, as the fighter pilot and I was in the cabin yeah here I am in the ship uh, in the spaceship and then here here I am as a fighter pilot and I'm on this scene I get there's a lot of explosions and I'm running I get out of the ship and um, I roll, uh, get the, through the explosions, and I rip my pants. Oh, no. <laughs> I remember ripping the pants because, see, I had to have the boys' football girdle under everything. And, you know, yeah, so I ripped the pants. Um, that was pretty embarrassing. But then my, my favorite episode, which is this one on Battlestar Galactica, because here again, when you think, when you know the Marning Fields name for stunts, as you've, I've already described, you know dexterity and versatility. 
that what my talent was, it was so uh, dexterous. Like even in, when you see in Hellhole, when I walk across that plate of eggs and into the, you know, it's like, <laughs> um, and that thing on the barbed wire fence. But okay, so on Battlestar Galactica, it's dark again, and I'm in this big, cumbersome, purple, uh, you know, thing with a sash, and I've got a gun in one, I've got the um, uh, shotgun in one hand, and now he's going to ride up, this isn't a horse, this is camel. The, he's oh, boy. Galloping on, he's galloping as fast as he can on the camel, and he reaches out, he scoops me up, I've got no hands now, okay, none, and I've got to get that leg up over the hump to get on that camel, to get it up high enough and you know at five i'm bare, not even five four five three and a half so i i get the leg uh, but i'm not able to sit in the um, between the hump because that's where he's sitting jerry summers and so i am on the butt of the camel and i'm he's going as fast as he can at night through the explosions and i have to keep the gun in my hand the shotgun so i'm only holding on with one hand but the reason that that wasn't a disaster and it almost was when you get to this uh third shot here in the sequence it's a miracle i didn't pull that camel i didn't pull us off off of there it's a miracle i didn't tip us both over but what jerry summers did I, with the big sash around my waist he's holding me for dear life He's got that, he, on all these years, until I put that poster together and slowed it frame by frame and, and, and screen grabbed those, all these years I thought, it's me on that camel. I'm sliding around, I held on, ha ha. You know, and I was, I was like, um, it wasn't though. I would not have made it. Jerry Summers was holding me as tight as he could. You can see me here, I'm about to fall out. That was the slipperiest butt and in the dark and those explosions and the camel going nuts but then the other thing is being very young and i had gotten false fingernails that day huh. and so when, <laughs> when i got up all the fingernails came off they all came off oh, so but that sounds yeah, painful. That was, it was yeah they flipped right off because i, I guess whatever was but Thank God for Jerry Summers. What a great stunt man. And I never could have done that stunt. And I thought it was me all these years until I saw how he's, he's the reason that where he's holding me for dear life on that. Imagine if that sash would have come loose. Oh, boy. You know, so there's all these factors that go on, and there's always a little something that um, it can be a simple thing. And and you could be hurt. But what I wish, and I, I wish it more and more, is I, I wish I wouldn't have had the bad car accident by the uninsured motorist that took my career and cost me everything and fought for my life and lost everything. I wish the world could have seen more of that old corporate talent because and I still think about it, you know, I think about it every day, like, if, if, if only, if only, um, and, but it wasn't meant to be, but still it doesn't take away the pain of, of losing something you loved as much as I loved that career, but now, you but know. It puts you in another direction, I think that's, I mean, even though you're not doing stunt work anymore, you're now, you, it didn't stop you. That's what, that's amazing. Oh, some it's, it's just, inspirational. Yeah, some people just gave up. <laughs> it was oh, like, no, oh, my, my life is over. Uh, I can't do it anymore. And I, I have to, I have to say I am, I am in awe and I'm very uh, uh, thrown, uh, taken back by your, your strength to do, to Thank move on and keep going. Thank you. And I want you to, when the new film comes out, you guys are going to be the first I'm going to tell about it. And I'm, I'll give you oh, the fundraiser. Great. I, um, you know, it's just, I didn't expect all this to happen. And the success that I've had with my music, which is, I, I just love uh, um, composing 
singing, you know, broken hearted love songs and, <laughs> you know, so just, uh, just very thankful that I'm, yeah, I mean, I've, I, I, there were 12 years I lived in heights of screaming, excruciating pain as they kept opening my stomach and taking everything out of me. I never thought I would be pain free, but God healed me. God healed me. And um, I never thought I'd get on my feet to do anything again. And today I live pain free. I'm dancing a little bit. I'm doing a, um, I'm working as a network executive at a TV series out of Fox. And oh, wow. I audition. I know. Oh, there's something we didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, it's just, it's coming. Um, and they auditioned me with, um, you know, I'm in my 60s now. And they auditioned me with about 25, 20 year old dancers. And a couple of the judges said they liked my dancing best. And it was arabesque. <laughs> you know, it was. Uh, <laughs> Jeté, it was turn, it was pot of you know, it was sachet. Um, and it, it was like, they like, I like yours, but well, what they were looking for was hip hop, Michael Jackson. Pop. Oh, geez. And I, I don't really do that kind of thing. Yeah, no. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but it was like a big day that day that the dancers had to do dance to four songs. Poor song. And I wasn't prepared and I was thinking off the top of my head and I thought, You're auditioning me? You know, I never thought well, they're auditioning me. I'm doing the network executive. Well, you I shouldn't be a I just thought they'd take me aside and I could say, Okay, I can do um, you know, pencil turn. I can do uh, box step, I can do um you know, uh, um, salsa. I can do cha cha cha. I I just thought that they would be special with me and take me aside and let me show them what I could do one at a time. But they made me get up there and dance to four songs with all the twenty year olds. <laughs> oh wow! I was able to find that uh, that scene in uh, Battlestar that you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, please. Yes, please. I took the audio out of it so you can't hear it. There, there it is. And there I am almost pulling us over. And there we go. It's oh, amazing wow. how much goes into just such a, a, a less than, you know, less Simple. than a couple of seconds in a movie. Yeah. Or in a, in a TV show. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> and a lot of it in dark, you know, everything was yeah. dark and heels and shorts and you know and all that stuff is done i guess on the back lots of of uh you know of this you know where they're you're filming so right. you're so right there's i mean it was some all the big studios and so much on the back lot of um universal all the hardy boy nancy drews and that was exciting because you got to at that time they had the gate and the guard and you got to you know, get to give your name and get a parking spot. And there, I always had a trailer with my name on it. And Ooh. yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, just amazing. And that's why I think it was, it was doubly painful. Um, I never got over losing it. I never got over, no matter what would happen, nothing, nothing could take away that, that, that loss. Mm -hmm. And cut short the career, cut short at the peak of the career. I was right there to break as, a, as an actress. And so, wow. Um, but so, but uh, the, I would I, imagine. Go ahead. What uh, Sorry. Baz Baz from uh, Down Under was uh, asking about your fitness and your 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 fitness regiment that you obviously had to maintain. To be able to do all that stunt work, how did that come into play uh, afterwards? Right, I would imagine well, that it's, it may save your life. That's brilliant. That is nobody's ever asked me that, and that is like the most important thing. Is that yeah? They, you know, okay. I'm I'm on a murder she wrote, and I'm doubling um, the the girl that was on Terminator, Linda Hamilton. 
Yes. Ooh. And I'm playing the tennis pro. And I'm also just have to fall on the tennis court. So fall on the tennis court and I have hemorrhaged. And I'd had the accident already and I had returned to work. And now I get home and my stomach is the size of a watermelon and I'm in excruciating pain and I, I have to go to the hospital and I'm like, there's something really, really wrong and my mom is living close by. So I go to the hospital and they find that the tissue that was ripped in the car accident has tried to regrow and it's grown into this massive tumor and it's ready to attach to the bladder. And if it, if a tumor attaches to the bladder, you're dead. You're dead in seconds. Oh, wow. And so I'm rushed in and mentioned to the hospital. I'm rushed into surgery. I'm in surgery like, I don't know, eight or 10 hours. They've removed this tumor and they found other problems and things related to the accident and the different things that are there. So now I'm released, I go back home and all I can think is that I've got to get, you know, get back in shape. And so I, each of these surgeries, now there were five altogether and um, a couple, one went through the stomach and another one cut everything out because um, a lot of abnormal cells started to grow. And with each of these, there were three complete abdominal uh, cuts, cesarean cuts, where they open the whole stomach and just take everything. And then uh, the other two, those were not mild either. Uh, they could have been if you hadn't already had the accident and all the tissue and everything. So after each of those operations, the first four, I was playing Elton John's, I'm still standing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm um, and I'm, I'm singing that song and I'm skating at the park. Now this would take time and I'm doing the jump rope and I'm um, getting back in shape and I'm going to be okay. And then they would find that I would collapse again. They would find more tumors. They have to go back in and they cut me again. And it was like one year I was writing some comedy stuff and it was like a samurai sawyer took a big old sword and just tried to cut me in half. And then I made it, well, he tried to make a gigantic smile where my, where my stomach is. Oh my gosh. And it's horrible. It's horrible. And it was so embarrassing because you're looking down at your stomach and all you're seeing is these staples across. You feel so humiliated. And I didn't answer the phone. I didn't talk to anyone like five years. I just sat on my bed and prayed and dragged myself to the microphone to sing. And um, just, just a horrible, horrible. Uh, and the pain. So then the pain would always hit. And because they removed... And this, again, I'm telling stuff I've never told. It's real personal, but it's it's good for people to know. Um, they took the top of the, the uterine, the uterus wall, so it would collapse. Ooh. And no matter how many, much I would try to get well, it would collapse. So the final surgery, UCLA doctors said, they won't do it, it'll kill me. They, they will not do the final surgery, and I'm bleeding to death. This is in 1999 just before my mother's found. She's been missing now nine years and I've been going through these operations. And so <clears throat> in 1999, I have the last operation. I get home, I fall on my face. Dear God, I don't want to die. Please, please. I collapse completely. It's my last breath. And I feel the hand of God touch me. I start to get better after that, but I never got the talent back again. I got it back a few times, but I never got it back. And even though I danced in that little competition, um, I, I didn't I, say I, you I, never I, got the talent back. I think it gave you a different it. talent. Yeah. The yeah, other yeah, talents you were other. able to concentrate on. I had to keep switching it. I had to keep, well, I can't do that anymore. Um, it was too humiliating for me to quit. And there were years, I know, people were saying, oh, that poor girl. Oh, you wouldn't want to be her, you know? <laughs> you wouldn't want to be, yeah. oh, my God. Wow. You know, and um, 
And look at you now. Now you're like all you're, you're you're on the rise again, and and you got your books coming out, and you got the movies, and you got all your singing career. And you you were able to to re redefine yourself, which not everybody can do. Like a phoenix so, out of the fire. Yeah, and so cool that you know we appreciate you coming and and sharing all this stuff because in the end, Marnie. It's about inspiring, and that's what you're doing. You're inspiring us to do more, to go out Thank there you and, and to be, I, I really you know. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's you know, it, it's true. It's all true. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're blessed that you're here with us, and we really appreciate you telling us, you know, all your stories. And, and you know, we want to make sure that we support you as well. And we're looking forward to, you know, seeing – the movie when it comes out and uh looking forward to the books as well oh definitely we the definitely books. Yeah, wanna, as soon as they come up yeah buy one because they're coming up uh towards you said the the end of this year so we definitely want to make sure we invite you uh open door well uh, book comes up uh you come back to the show uh, let us know okay. if you're going to be doing any autographs right if you're going to be doing any signings i don't know do you do uh conventions well, I I want to, yeah. That we're hoping. That's why um, somebody told me about them when we put the posters together. I've never, you know, sold any posters. You're my first poster sale. Oh yeah. The posters were brand new. <laughs> they were brand new, and you know. So um, the thing is, is that I had the cartwheels and halos story for a long time, and that's that's my religious and mystical story where the hand of God touched me. And uh, it's a fascinating uh, story. And that's been picked up by TBN's uh, trilogy um, broadcasting. And that'll release in 2023, about the Ooh. end of 2023. Um, and they have a 2 billion audience. And that should come out around the time that the movie, um, the things I write are, are, are very spiritual, mystical, and religious. And I have uh, some uh, really beautiful uh a white dove of love I've written, and it was at the the height of of this this horrible tragedy. And one day in prayer, I looked up and I, it was the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and actually a white dove of love descended on me in all this suffering, and um, you know, into my arms a gift from God above, a white dove of love, and. Um, it was it was a wonderful wonderful experience. But see, when you have been cut open that many times at the solar plex and fought for your life, you are hoovering between life and death. You're not down here in the grounded thing, jealous, angry, revengeful. You're none of that. You're fighting for your life, and you are leaving, and you're experiencing things that that other it isn't you know that's spiritual and um beautiful so i have a couple of those songs coming out and i'm really excited I'm putting the white devil love in the film so um it's it's cool. um very cool well we're looking forward to um the uh premieres and like i said you know the, the release of your books and we want to make sure that we're, uh, you know, we're in your loop. Uh, we want to support, and we you are fans. Are <laughs> I'm sorry? You guys are so cool. I'm, I'm really <laughs> thankful for having me tonight. I guess maybe the drive from Los Angeles to Las Vegas and running in here. I got here just in time to be on the show. Um, oh, you know, we really appreciate my, that, too. You know, because I'm not like, I, I'm just really you know you said it's my story and i i said you know i want to and it's just coming out the pain and the um the um well the experience you know. of of what it is and, and it's and the healing it's, it's genuine yeah it's i mean it is it's 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 a it's a truth and it's a reality it's your experience it's not a story it's your experience and and you know we're uh we're lucky that you're that you're here and that you're sharing it with us um it's exclusive and and thank you for that and like i said we want you to come back we have an open door for you yep. and um and let us know when the uh, to, yeah, oh, the yeah. uh crowdfunding comes up for the the movie yeah we'll put that up on yes. our site and everything thank you. i'll definitely send you the link and i'll connect with you on facebook 
Okay. I'm on Facebook. Uh, do you, are you guys on Facebook too? Yeah, that's pretty I much just, our, 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 our main audience is on Facebook. YouTube, not so much. Not so I, much. I, I, I did like your page today looking for where I was to log on. So. Oh, thank you. But thank you for having me. Oh, it's um, great. I, really, thank you for being an inspiration. Thank you for sharing your story. And uh, thank you for being one of the people behind the cameras, whether it be writing or singing or directing or and, and stunt uh, work. I mean, that's uh, that, that 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 that's something the fans don't get to talk to the people behind the cameras as much as they should. Everybody wants to concentrate on the actors and the actresses, whereas uh, it's it's so great to talk to somebody who created worlds and has. Is it's got the vision and the the drive to do the things that you've done. I was very happy just doing the stunts and the gymnastics and the small acting roles. I was I was so happy till the accident changed all that, and I was okay with that. I didn't need any more. I never needed to be, you know, top banana number one. Oh, it was great. It was okay. I, I, we've all, I've been so happy in life. Mm -hmm. that, um, and it was, you know, just what I was supposed to do, and I did it. You know? There you go. It's a calling. And now you've been called for something else. Now, <laughs> now it's uh, to see if I can, if I, you know, I know that I can do it. I know I've been trained by the best, and I know if I take my time that I, because they need female directors, mm -hmm. and they're always, they want more female directors, and I know theater directing, I, I, I'm I going to give that, you know, and then we, I have the assistant directors, you know, helping with lighting and some different things, which I already can see um, and know about. But theatrical directing, I'm, I do have a book on acting. Uh, it's a yep. five-star book on Amazon, and it's it's called The Elusive Craft of Acting, an Actor's Preparation Process. And I really suggest picking up this book. It's a, a short nonfiction, but it's going to give you all my secrets, training with Stanislavski and Chekhov in college, and as I went through the uh, with Victor French and Jeff Corey, and the things that I learned, um, and it's you can read it in one day. It's only nine dollars, and it's got uh, fifty photos of just my acting roles. Okay, cool. Very cool. All right. Um, so uh, some of our listeners, uh, just one in particular. Uh, Jeff Walters uh, sending prayers your way. Uh, and so everybody uh, that's listening is super, they're stoked that you came on. Um, and we are as well. Thank you so much. And we look forward to, you know, the future because there's a lot happening. And we definitely want to be a part of that and help support. Um, thanks for taking the time out. And, uh, Great guest, and again, looking forward to the next the next chapter in everything you're doing. Please come back. Please stay in touch with us. Um, we want to have you and, and hear more about all this great stuff. You're a true inspiration, Marnie. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Take yep. care. <laughs> you too. Uh, take care. Bye. Here's here's to Marnie, guys. Yep. Uh, to the uh, the survivor, Marnie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Till next time. So incredible, Chris. I mean, that's that's one heck of an inspirational story. Man. Oh, yeah. That was, that was awesome. She's right? uh, she to quite an amazing lady. And, yeah. And, and man, she's been in so many. I mean, we, we didn't even bring up the fact that um, I may have mentioned it last time, but I'm re-watching Logan's run. So when you told me, Oh yeah, that you know she done a Logan's Run. I looked it up and I was yeah, like, actually, "Wow, I think you know I, she's did, did I show that? I didn't show that. Oh yeah, I did show that, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Yeah, she, you did know, she tumbled that. down on that yeah. on uh, episode fourteen that you and I had talked about, and it was like, wow. So she's she's been involved in a lot of the things that we are all you know 
all happy to discuss. And, you know, you were saying how, you know, we, we are escapes, you know, right. we live in a lot of the things that we enjoyed as younger people. And she's been a part of all of that. And then some, so that's, right. that's pretty cool, man. And then she's creating new things too. So yeah. And then, yeah. uh, yeah, Jeff Waters, uh, reminded or is reminding me that, that, uh, one of her parents was the inventor of the inflatable door seal. Wow, her father. I think her father was the uh, the uh, inventor of the inflatable door seal. Oh yeah, Baz. Baz is saying uh, fantastic to hear from the talent behind the scenes. Thank you. Yeah, I mean that's the whole point, right? We we love to bring people like Marnina on the show, and you know, and she opened up and shared a lot of uh, you know personal stories that she had never done before. Um, very very cool. So we are humbled. Thank you, Marnine, for sharing. Yep. I can't wait um, to read. Uh, I mean, imagine in the seventies. Being a, a you know, and don't get me wrong. I mean, you watch. I, I've been rewatching like the Love Boat and those kind of things, and you watch yeah. the way that uh, the the women were treated in the seventies compared to the way women are treated yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Um, could you? I mean, I couldn't imagine how difficult of a job it is to be uh, a woman oh, yeah. stunt person in the seventies. I mean. I'm sure she probably uh, has got stories on that as well. The next time she comes back on, oh, you know, there's love yeah. To hear. Uh, yeah. John won our own. John wanted to know she was more the about. Guy, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the howling. Um, she did Fantasy Island, which you know yeah. I, we didn't get a chance to talk. I mean, there's a lot. She's been in so much. She could probably and... talk for. She could probably tell us stories for hours. <laughs> oh heck <laughs> sure. yeah! I would Hands love to hear down. them too. Uh, Baz is a, Baz has an update. I've got the starboard wing on now, and the Viper is on wheels, moving around the workshop at the touch of a finger. Ooh. You rock, Baz. You are awesome. And we have to schedule uh, a time slot for you to come back, Baz. Oh yeah, we want to have you on live. Uh, so you got to let us know when that when that's when he's fiberglassing uh, it. We got to see available. the fiberglassing. Yeah, yeah, we got to do. We got to see that. Uh, so speaking of that, guys. Um, again, let's, uh, we just want to thank Maureen for coming on. We had a really good time. Thank you very much. And again, looking forward to the future. Um, speaking of the future, uh, you know, Chris and I, uh, we were joking around earlier today and later on in the year, we're going to do a marathon episode and we're going to have, uh, guest cameos. Yep. So all the guests that we've had, Throughout the last two years, uh, we're going to have them come on with us live for uh, short segments. So all you guys that have been on the show before. Notice Pete didn't mention tuned. how many hours it is. Okay, well, that's not <laughs> actually necessary at this point. But um, I... After Pete and being, I are in negotiations on the number well, of hours. Well, no, no. The, look, I, I will admit right now that uh, Chris convinced me, and so I accept chris your six hour challenge and so we're gonna have a six hour challenge um it, it was open open to a debate a long debate and and heavy heavy negotiations like a big <laughs> open bazaar and so chris convinced me that we're gonna do a six hour marathon so stay tuned for that um and yep. you know and we're, then we're we're, uh, do we're it. actually reaching out to uh so we september 17th is the Battlestar Galactica birthday, as well yep. as our birthday, uh, since we yep. broadcast our first broadcast was on September seventeenth. So, so, the uh, we're trying to we're working with uh, getting uh, Mr. Larson back on like we did last year. So yeah, so so we're going to reach out to Glenn and uh, get back in touch because he was uh, he's been busy. He's been very busy, but uh, yep. really kind-hearted guy, and and you know he spent time with us last year. So uh, we're going to try to. Uh, see if we can coordinate with him as well. And um, Katie, well, you know, Baz, <laughs> it's, I got to tell you. It's hard to get the actors actors on they, because actors want money. And, yeah, you know, they, and, and like I always say, and as some people have already heard this many times, is some of the actors were just actors. They, yeah. they, 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 they collected the paycheck. That's, that, that was their thing. And then they've got and that, fans. And it's okay. Right? That, it's that's okay, fine. Right? There's, There's no problem there's nothing with, that. Wrong yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then there's, actors that are fans like uh, Richard Hatch was a very big fan of, of the Battlestar Galactica franchise and 
He was a champion. Yeah. I guess that's a better word, more than a yes, fan. He was a yes, champion. That's right. He was a champion. So and there's, there's, there's champions. There's a few out there. Yeah, there's a there's few a champions few. of the uh, Battlestar Galactica and 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 different and ones. The um, yeah. Stringer is it, it? Which who played yeah. the? Um, is it Stringer that played the NV? The uh, I can't remember the guy's name. He's well, a big champion say, as well. He loves to talk about the the show, and he's really big into it. So there are right. very few actors or actresses that are that are John fans or yeah John West, the original uh, West, uh, Flash yeah he's so. you know I, I met him at uh, SteelCon in Pittsburgh and he's one of them he champions yep. his show uh, all you know all the Flash shows but remember he was the first Flash and uh, TV Flash and you know he knows his episodes he always spoke to the writers and he spoke to the directors and he helped um craft some of the dialogue so when you meet him if you ever go uh to a con that he's at you got to go to his panel because he's you know he's in he's a champion of his work and right. it's great to see him on stage talking to you and and he'll tell you if you're going to autograph he goes listen everybody like he'll like the line will be waiting for him and he'll tell everyone hey guys listen thanks for coming and and um i want to meet each one of you but um keep your questions for the panel he goes, all of you, you come to the panel. I will answer all your questions. Uh, let's keep it for the panel so we can get that going. And, 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 and you know, it was it was an experience. I There's not that many, Chris. There's not a lot of yeah. actors that are champions. And now, I can tell you then, like I said, know, uh, Baz, is, Baz is like, uh, Baz mentioned uh, now Katie. And, and matter of fact, um, during Dragon Con, a couple of times where I've got to talk to uh, Katie Sackoff, and uh, asked, I asked her as I was getting uh, autographs and things like that from her. She uh, asked her, "Are you a? Are you?" An, and that's, that's usually my question I ask for the actors. So, are you? A, are were you an actor? Or are you actually a fan? And Katie told a story about um, her father and her watching the original Battlestar Galactica episodes and how that had an effect on her. So she oh. is a she is a fan of Battlestar that's Galactica. Cool. As well that as uh, cool. I'm sure she's a fan of Star Wars now because you know she's in the Star she's Wars thing. Star Wars. But, yeah. yeah, of course. It's uh, it's good to hear, and, and you know, it makes you feel good when you you hear actors and actresses that you know their parents did that. I mean, of course, my daughter swears to this day she's never going to watch Planet of the Apes again because when she was a kid, I watched made her watch Planet of the Apes, <laughs> and it scarred her for life. But uh, <laughs> yeah, speaking of PTSD, right? You yeah, no kidding. Her. Yeah, great she doesn't show, like anything man. about Planet of the Apes. I said, "What's well, great show?" It's like she, I scared it got scared her. I guess uh, when yeah, I it's, when, it's, when I watched yeah, it with her. So as a kid, it's scared. Yeah, Mark Singer, know. thank thank you, uh, John. That was the John person. Rupert, yeah. Mark Singer is a big uh, uh, a fan too, and he's one of the people that gets up in front of the audience. And I loved it because you know everybody sits behind the big at a comic con. They all sit behind the desk. If you ever never been to one, I'm not sure, but most of you guys have, but and gals have, but they sit behind a uh, table, uh, a table, or sit at a table with a microphone, and and I, I think Singer is the only one I've ever seen take the microphone off the table, walk around to the front, and sit down at the edge of the thing. And he says, "I don't like being this far away from the fans. I want to be with you." Wow, and, that's cool. And he would answer questions right then, you know, right cool. in front of you, and he would oh, walk wow. up to people, and and it was great. Uh, Mark yeah, Singer is a wonderful actor. He's been in a lot of shows, man. Yeah, I, he, that's really cool, man. Uh, have not had the pleasure of meeting him, so that's definitely somebody I think I'd like to. Uh, Mediocre Modeler says that will be amazing. Oh my God, six hours! You should do a live reading or something. Yes, Ooh. we are working out some of the ideas, some of the kinks. You're going to be on, yeah. right? Mediocre Modeler was oh, yeah, we definitely have him on two years ago. So you you're invited and. Uh, Sean we Shallow's, definitely get Marnie uh, to come on and give us an update well, on uh, yeah, oh, funding Marnie. and everything else on the on the yeah, on the, we, and the we'd books. We'd like to have all, all of you back, all our guests. Yep. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to squeeze all you guys back on uh, for a couple. That's why I told minutes. Pete, I was, uh, see Pete, six hours isn't gonna be enough. <laughs> six hours is more than enough. No, nope. um, no, and, then, and we're also gonna do uh, trivia uh, contests yeah, and things like trivia, that on there too. Absolutely, absolutely. So we'll have a couple of different and, trivia contests like we did last time. Don't forget Knoxville Fan yep. Expo is coming up. Uh, looking forward to Next meeting weekend. up with 
is it next weekend? Yes, yeah, so it's not this weekend. one. It's the one after, right? Yeah, so this weekend, before, but next weekend. Next weekend, Commander Keen, Paul Roeder, and his uh, Silver Spar wing of Colonial Warriors are going to be at Knoxville. So looking forward to seeing all of you guys there Saturday. Uh, we're going to have a good time. Uh, that'll be a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, and Paul, remember, uh, we're going to be doing an interview, right? So we're going to do a convention interview with none other than Paul Roeder, Commander Kane, well-known uh, in all the Battlestar Galactica circles. Uh, so we're looking forward to that, doing that. And um, we are we intend to coordinate uh, dinner for Saturday night. So all you guys yep. that are going to meet up with us, right? So make sure that um, uh, you keep that open so that we can all get together. Uh, John McCartney says, I came in late, but uh, I have a question. Tips. How is Project Lucifer coming? <laughs> yes, John, so all right. We had that discussion <laughs> earlier. So um, <laughs> Lucifer is still coming. Uh, actually, I, I wish I, had, I could coming get my to camera. Dragon Con. He'll, he'll be going to Dragon Con for sure. Okay. Um, the uh, the big hiccup right now with uh, the, with Lucifer is the uh, the plastic dome. Um, His brains. Right now, I have the plastic stretched out on the other side of this curtain um, <laughs> with weights that. uh, on it to flatten it out. Uh, so I, when I get the heat gun out, it's not like all curly up already. So. <laughs> that is a uh, project for this weekend. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try to uh, get that uh, up and running and smooth around, and melt, and melt, it, melt the melt the thing around. So Lucifer will have the, the that piece of it man. done. Now, my daughter, on the other hand, I don't know where she's at, so she's watching. Uh, you need to hurry up. Um, <laughs> you're on the spot. You're on the spot, but the spot. <laughs> she uh, she's the one doing the, uh, the the robe piece of it, and I'm the one with just. I did the head and the football jersey type thing with the tubes and everything else that's going to hold it. Uh, so I got all that Dude, done. You so get somebody to film it, man. It's going to yeah. be hysterical. Yeah. So it's uh, it, it's going to be cool. I think it's fun. And uh, you know, I we just have a panel uh, at Dragon Con. Yeah, we have. I have a panel at Dragon Con. Uh, it's yeah. just uh, we have another. Uh, we're going to do another um, trivia contest at Dragon Con. And uh, I think we have a cosplay. I think I'm on the cosplay panel at Dragon Con for um, military sci-fi. Cool. Very cool. I uh, saw John Reppert said, can you believe that dagger dribble? <laughs> Good stuff. So, Good stuff. All right. Well, um, so, yeah. yeah, so we have there's fir So first we have Knoxville, right? We got Fan yep. Expo. And then... Um, that then is, I guess, the next big thing would be obviously Dragon Con. Yeah, yep. Dragon Con. Right, and so then we'll have, New York uh, Comic Con. And then New York Comic Con. That's right. And then we're working on guys. As a matter of fact, um, we were if talking anybody has about some suggestions for larger cons and like they were looking yeah. for a larger con in Florida. Like, uh, yeah, I heard so, of Pensacon, but I'm not sure if that's the larger one or not. And then there's MegaCon uh, in Orlando, but that's in March of next year. Yeah. So we're also we're also thinking of scheduling um, one uh, convention in California. So we're gonna try our our really really hard to get into San Diego, but there's a couple of backups. There's the LA Comic Con, and there's uh, Long Beach. The Long Beach convention looks really good too. So hmm. we're we're putting that up on the map. And uh, we'll see. We'll see uh, how it all pans out. But, uh, oh, we're also, Chris, we're also talking about doing the non-sports card show in PA. In, in That's Philly? in October yeah. also. So we're going to see if we can maybe make that one. I need, a set, I need a set of V cards. Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll have them. Yeah. They'll have them for sure. I don't have so any V cards cool. yet. i got to get the V yeah. cards. That will be awesome. Um, and they yeah, find right. anything that's uh, Jar Jar Binks for uh, for Pete. So, uh, yes, of course. <laughs> oh, Jar, Jar, boy. Well, Jar Jar Binks. Speaking of, Pete loves yeah, Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> you enjoy him. Yes, you have a good time with that. <laughs> so yeah, we did an interview with uh, an Etsy store, um, Matt Chess. Matt Chess uh, for Jude Ware. Jude Ware, and uh, yep. we asked him if he could do a. Uh, a shirt for us, and he did. This, yep, uh, anybody he did. recognizes the shirt from Star Trek? Bread so. and circuses, baby. Yep. 
Yeah, I love that episode. One of my one of my favorite top six episodes. That's probably I think maybe number two or three out of my top six of all so three seasons. I have the same shirt, but I did not get it out of the dryer. And it's all wrinkled, so I was going to show it. <laughs> so, so, the, so, guys, I mean, I'm sure you guys were all probably, yeah, John McCartney, Bread and Circuses. Um, yep. So I'm, I'm sure that you all wa were watching, but just, just for the record, right, we, we had a good time with Matt, and we brought up all kinds of um, suggestions. And uh, that night, we suggested this shirt. And lo and behold, like within, I within don't know, 24 a hours. Day, yeah. Yeah, he he told, he sent us a link, and so here it is, man. I mean, we brought this up, and he heard us. Uh, I'm looking forward to the Planet of the Apes. Chris, uh, you bought the hoodie. Yeah, I bought the. Uh, uh, you got his hoodie. hoodie. So, hang on. Yeah. Do I need to show said, that? Yeah, right. why not, man? That's over here. Um, so yeah, I mean, I went on. He, sh he sent the link. I I picked this one up. I bought that. So, so did uh, Chris. Bought his, and um, he uh, Chris got the hoodie. So I'm looking forward to my next purchase will probably be, you know, and uh, the Planet of the Apes stuff plus the, some of the Galactica stuff. But So um, I did I did buy the hoodie. Now, I had bought a hoodie from another person yeah, on uh, yeah. on there before. This right. one is so much better. Um, so this is the, uh, oh, this is like the, uh, the, the helmet on the hood. So they, all the way to the back. And then it's got, it's got the, uh, the eagle on the top and then all of the uh the uh oh the lines and stuff the lines like and everything else is on it oh, i was impressed cool. with it i think it was definitely worth it and in this is so much better than the other i mean the buckles look like real buckles oh wow that's buckles, cool. real, like real buckles yeah and then the biggest thing on the other one was the patch on the shoulder from the other one was like twice the size it was huge so this one is much better and actually i think this one's that's what there's no doubt about it this one is heavier uh thick wise thickness wise compared to the one i uh, the other one i bought so yeah highly recommend the know. jude wear uh yeah, good stuff. Oh, i mean uh, you know once again this is not a paid advertisement i paid for this they did not give it to yep. me fran so, uh, Fran says, I ordered the coffee mugs with the ship insignia, the geometric design, and got them within a week. Excellent. Wow. Excellent quality. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, so that's why we want to bring that up and we want to, you know, uh, thank Matt for uh, listening to us. Uh, obviously not the only guest that we've brought on, right? So yep. we've had a bunch. Uh, we also want to thank everybody, Chris, that tuned in to watch the 40th anniversary thing um uh oh, special that we did wanna... with von babison uh, we have over 25,000 <laughs> views on that um so and that's, that's on facebook because youtube facebook. dropped it <laughs> but we won't go there i've been i have been back and Battling. forth with youtube in regards to copyright infringement and fair yeah. use yeah. for the last three and a half four weeks yeah. Back yep, and almost, forth, almost and back a month. And forth. But on so, Facebook, you know, Facebook's Facebook, not a problem. Over, YouTube is just a pain in so, the. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Uh, I also want to pull something up from the past, and that was this, guys. Yep. I don't know if any of you also had joined the Caprica Society. Um, this is my original uh, copy that I had. Um, this came with, um, you know, you'd send, you, uh, if you guys remember the SACE, right? Self-addressed stamped envelope. And this was uh, the Caprica Society out of um, Seaside Park, New Jersey. And the president was Christine Hanzopoulos. So Let me look her up on Facebook and try to find out. Definitely Greek. And... Um, it said that it invites you to receive all the excitement of Battlestar Galactica by joining the new international BSG fan organization. $15 membership dues include a set of Colonial Warrior pins, which I did get, a personalized laminated Colonial Warrior photo ID, two <laughs> cubits, a Colonial Warrior patch, an 8x10 color glossy, a certificate of graduation from the Colonial Academy upon 
taking a colonial warrior rank quiz based on BSG trivia, a year subscription to Book of the Word, a bi-monthly newsletter filled with stories, articles, pictures, news, updates on the stars, a letter zine or zine section, info on other clubs, and much more. So Book of the Word, was that a... Fandom lives. What? Book of the Word, was that a... Uh... Hey, um, Book of the Word. That rings a bell. Book of the Word. A bi-monthly newsletter filled with stories, articles, pictures. It's not a fanzine, though, right? Uh, it's a letter zine. I don't know. It has I, We have to look into this, man. Yeah, let's we'll see have to look into that one. Around. If you, you guys know me and fanzines, that's that's my, yeah. my big collection. I love getting I, stories. I, have it. I showed you it. I have yeah. one. I have huh. one. So if any of you guys actually join this, uh, hey, let's let's talk. Dorian Keys, award-winning author, friend of IFB, and uh, working with us on our fan yep, uh, he's movie. Working on our fan movie. Yep. Yes. Always I've asked, to watch I've asked Dorian to do. If you haven't gone over to Dorian's uh, YouTube site and listened to some of his uh, compositions, his compose uh, his music, it's great. Yeah. It's fun. It's uh, you know, if you can close your eyes and make you know, let your imagination wander with it, it's great. So. Well, we asked uh, Dorian if he would do the score for our uh, fan film. Uh, and once again, uh, some of you don't know about our fan film, so but we're actually putting together a Battlestar Galactica fan film. So uh, if you're interested in uh, in that, uh, we're going to we'll throw up a, a, some information on that. But uh, if you go to our Facebook site, uh, the... Oh, crap. The... Uh, it's not well, the Lost Warrior. It's the... Uh, the, the stranded, stranded warrior warrior uh the stranded warrior is our is the name of ours so if you look that up on facebook right um, so eventually we'll start putting stuff. some stuff there um yep. i rated you i rated a uh colonial group the other day so i have five lasers lasers coming so yes so we have uh we got our cgi guys in place uh yep. uh chuck and chris and our prop master is Mediocre Modeler. Um, we have uh, on the team is Dorian now. Uh, we had Fiat Lux Productions, uh, Spartan Red Productions, um, uh, G-Force Productions, your company, the Tipsy Toaster Productions, uh, are all involved in this. So it's separate from IFB, but it's a project that we're doing. Yep. And... Um, we are and we're then moving Tricky Faye is doing the uh, costuming. Uh, doing the pro yeah, doing the costuming. Yep. That's right. Thank you. And uh, so, and then uh, Dorian Keys has joined uh, our uh, our production staff, and he's actually going to be doing the soundtrack. So, thank you, Dorian. Uh, so, go over support Dorian. Uh, pick up one of his books. He was one of our uh, very first busy. interviews. We need to have him on that yeah. six hour show. Yeah, too. he's going to be coming on our six hour as well. So, yeah, cool stuff, man. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. Book of the Word was a religious text of the Twelve Colonies. That's yep. uh, Fran. That was, Book yeah. of the Word was a writings of the Lords of Cobol. John Repper, John McCartney says, uh, Adama referenced the Book of the Word in one of the classic yeah. episodes. And I guess that's what the take on that is. And so since we were working, we already started working on a CGI for the um, fan film, which is uh, a... Um, you know something that we are looking forward to uh doing and it's a showcase as well as a fan film uh, i went and i picked these up so a lot of you have actually seen these right this is kind of cool that it came with uh you know the viper up in front and it's right storyboards from the original um i thought we may end up uh, using some of the uh, technique in uh, explaining some of the cgi that we're going to be needing and i just i saw it on uh, eBay, and I picked these up. I thought they were really, really cool. Um, they're on the internet, but uh, nothing like having. I wish, the wish they weren't reproductions. I wish they were the original things. It'd be cool. Yeah, they were available. <laughs> they're available. Yeah. The um, they were up for auction. They were. Yep, I they remember it wasn't too long ago. They thousands were and thousands and thousands. Yeah, so a little beyond yeah. my uh, price range. I don't think my yeah, wife exactly. would appreciate so, that. Any. This was. <laughs> this was. I thought it was very cool. This is tipsy. Would not appreciate me uh, spending yeah, that much money. I don't appreciate it myself. So I uh, I got those. I thought it was kind of cool. And again, since we were visualizing, our CGI is already started. So our guys are, are working on it. And I wish we could show some of that, but it's we want to hold it. We yeah, we're going to hold it. 
Um, we're going to be, uh, we're, you know, we're still in pre-production, the shooting scripts ready. Uh, the teams are all ready. We're going to be starting, uh, you know, I guess casting will be eventually. And, uh, at some point we'll be doing a, a Kickstarter. Um, so we'll let you guys know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And, nobody uh, else has done too many, uh, serious Battlestar Galactica 1978 fan films. So we figured why not? So we wrote yeah. a script and it sounded good and we sent it off to a couple of people and they're like, Oh, these lines are amazing. So I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. But, and then yep. here we are, we're going to go ahead and do it. Are. So doing our it. Uh, script is actually based on one of the shows that Marnine was a stunt person for, uh, and that was the lost warrior. So she was, That's right. I don't know what, I forget to ask her what, what, the, what, the, what, what stunt she did in that one. So we're going to bring her back. She's coming yeah. back. It'd be really cool if, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we, we get her involved somehow. Um, who has a new book coming out? I think Lola, um, get us, uh, get us some more info. Uh, yeah. So, uh, with that said, uh, Chris, yeah. we, you That's know, a, it was really, yeah. yeah, it's about that time, but it was really cool. Marnine came on and it was a heck of a, um, it was a really cool thing. Yeah. So, Don't forget to go over to her uh, site and check yeah, things out. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, marninefields.com. Yes. Thank you, Bess, for tuning in uh, from yep. down under. Uh, Dorian always has some something new coming out, so we're gonna get with him. Uh, yeah, very cool. Um, so yeah, man, let's let's just let's just rock it, guys. Everybody that watches us live, thank you so much. We owe yep. you a chapter. We owe you a chapter, and yep, we'll um, next week. we didn't get a chance to do Armageddon this time, but um, we are on uh, chapter 20. 20. So if you guys want to catch up. We're getting up, real close uh, to the end, by the way. Yeah. Next next uh, show, we're going to be doing chapter 20. We got Marvel Comics. We have the French comic as well. Um, so we'll be doing and, one of the- And Pete's uh, going to translate for us because I, I don't read French. I, I barely translate. passed English. <laughs> you know what? Um, it's unfortunate, Chris. Everybody can hear it the way you pronounce and speak your <laughs> English, but it's okay. It's America, yeah. right? We do you speak any way you want? I know that you're from the Midwest. It's okay. Yes, you're from the Midwest. <laughs> it's a, it's a sci-fi dystopia novel. Dorian, yep. what's uh? All right, you gotta give, you gotta keep us on a loop, man, so we can put this the word out. Yep. Uh, but in the meantime. Uh, I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna go for it, Chris. I'm gonna thank everybody as I usually do. Yep. Um, and just you know, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, we love having you on board. Please keep clicking the thumbs up and the likes. So tonight, uh, before it's over, please make sure you do that for us. Appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to tell your friends about the show. Uh, and if you want to contact us, our email is info at interfleetbroadcasting.com. Stay safe. See you at our next show. And of course, keep the faith. Chris. Well, everybody, uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next Thursday when we circle back around and the uh and, and we get ready to take over the earth, a Cylons will. Um <laughs> and we will uh, make make sure we get the uh the chapter twenty of the book. But it's important that uh we, we recognize you. We thank you for your time. Uh it, it's it's great that Pete and I can sit here and talk about this stuff and 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 talk to meet and meet and talk to great people but it's the people on the other end that make a difference so thank you so much for your time and uh we hope to see you next week so y'all take care so fans feel the fleet and here's to you thanks guys take care <laughs>